another night that we can come to our Bible study at St. John Missionary Baptist Church, Soul Saving Center, under the leadership of Pastor Black and elect lady Patricia Black. But truly, God has been good to us, yes. and we yes. thank him for another day. Yes. We're going to start off with a song of praise and worship by Sister Silva Beth, scripture by Deacon Everett, and prayer by Sister Brenda Ewan. Let's come on, let's praise him one more time. Yes. For truly, he woke us up this morning. Yes. God has been so good to us, yes. and we're going to praise and thank him for that. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Glory. Hallelujah. Good evening. Good evening. First, I do give all honor to God who is the head. I give honor to Pastor Black, Evangelist Black, and her elder, and everyone else in their respectful order. Lord, I know I've been changed. Yes. Lord, I know I've been changed. Lord, I know. It says, let not your heart be troubled. Yes. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many men. If it wasn't so, I would have told you. I'm going away to prepare a place for you. If I go away to prepare a place for you, I'm coming again to receive you unto myself. And where I am, there you may be also. Thomas said unto him, Lord, you know not where I go. How can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, yes. the truth, and the life. No man coming to the park but by me. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Let every heart pray. Father, we come now before your holy presence right now to tell you thank you, God. Thank you for another day we've never seen before, God. Thank you for life, health, and strength. Thank you for your blood, Jesus. Thank you for how you look beyond the hands of time, Father God. God, you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus, to die for us, oh God. Die for the sins of the world, oh God. Didn't have to do it because he knew no sin, but God, we tell you thank you because he made a way for us, oh God. Oh God, that we could have a right to the tree of life, oh God. And God, we just tell you thank Thank you, Thank you, Lord. Look upon everyone that's here, Father God. Everyone that's looking, listening by Facebook or the conference call, God. Search our hearts, search our minds, oh God. Oh God, continue to look upon us, oh God. Forgive us, oh God, for every sin of omission and commission, God. Oh God, continue to lead us and guide us, oh God. Move by your spirit from heart to heart, bread to mind to mind and soul to soul, oh God. That you will have your own divine way on this life, oh God. Father God, touch.
touch our pastor God, God, touch us, Lord, oh God. We believe you already study, oh God, and prepared, oh God. Now you prepare him, oh God. Oh God, give him a word, oh God. Anoint him fresh right now, oh God. Front of crimes his head to the soul and see it, oh God. God, that you will bring forth your word with boldness and clarity, oh God. God, that even a child can understand and take it in and even apply it to their heart, oh God. God, we tell you, thank you, God. We're praying that you will save somebody, forgive somebody, set somebody free on your mind, oh God. We need your word like never before, God. Have your own divine will, oh God. We tell you, thank you, God. God, we thank you for our first lady, her absence, oh God. You know, Father God. Oh God, we tell you, thank you for every absent member that desires to be here, oh God. Oh God, bless them and touch them, oh God. Every sick and shut in, everyone that's homeless, oh God. God, the world over, oh God. So many trials and tribulations come against you people of God. But you still are God. You sit yeah. high and you look low and we tell you it's thank you right there, oh God. God, we plead the blood of Jesus over every yes, situation, oh God. The blood that will never lose its power, yes. oh God. We tell you thank you, thank God. You. God, help thank the men you. and the women of God to continue to cry loud and spare oh, God, oh God. Yes. Use them for your glory, yeah. oh God. God, that you will have your way in the yeah. name of your people, oh God. In the name of Jesus, yeah. I was praying for every person that's bereaved, oh God. Yeah. Every family, everyone that lost their loved one, oh God. Touch them right now, oh God. Oh God, in those deep places, oh God, where they're feeling the hurt and the pain. Touch them in the name yes. of Jesus. Yes. God, have your way, oh God. God. Have your way, oh God. Have your yes. own divine way, yes. God. Touch the children, oh Lord. Touch in the name Lord. of Jesus. God, prepare the hearts and mind right now, oh God. Yes. Oh God, that they will receive the word. We will receive it and yes. take it to our heart, yes. oh God. Apply it to our life, oh God. Not yes. take it and push it to no one else, oh God. Yes. We need you, oh God. Yes. Like yes. never before in this last and evil day. Oh God. Yes. Father, we tell you, thank you, God. We bless you, oh God. God, we just continue to lift your name for you. Say, I'll be lifted up from the earth. I will draw all men unto yes. you, oh God. Draw your people unto tonight, oh God. Reclaim the backslider. Save the sinner man, oh God. In the name of Jesus, oh God. Lead our pastor down into your storehouse. Your knowledge, your wisdom, your understanding, oh God. And he will rightly divide the word of truth, oh God. In the name of Jesus, God. He will help us, oh God. Oh God, to continue to run this race with patience, oh God. In the name of Jesus, God. We thank you. We praise you and we honor you. We lift your name up on tonight, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus. This is my prayer. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the precious Holy Ghost. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Praise God. At this time, we get in a posture to hear from heaven. Hear ye, hear ye, the man of God. Amen. God's servant, Pastor Black, at this time. Amen. God bless you, Pastor. Amen. Say good evening to everybody. Chapter 5, 
verses 13 through 15 tonight. I want to talk about tonight that uh, some things uh, we should know as Christians. Some things that we should know as a Christian. Or you can say some things we should know as the body of Christ. Amen. But you can put the body of Christ um, you can say Christian. Amen. Some things that we should know. Amen. Uh, before I get into that, that, there's a lot of things in this world uh, that we do not know. Amen. Amen. A lot of things we cannot know. Amen. And there's a lot of things in life that doesn't even matter whether you know or not. Amen. Then something is so vital, so important that we should know. Amen. And that's what we're going to talk about tonight. It's just the iceberg of some things that we should know. Amen. We should find out what matters most in life. Yes. A lot of things in life really doesn't even matter. Amen. A lot of things that we're fussing and fighting and falling out over really don't even matter. Amen. We should find out what really yes. matters Amen. in life. Amen. What matters most in life. Amen. All of us have been children. Amen. We were not born grown. Amen. We were born a child. Amen. Amen. And we grow up, and, and some things that we get attached to come to ourselves. But as you grow older, as you mature, mm -hmm. a lot of that stuff don't even matter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you stop and think, I'm going to the test. You, you, you stop and think, you know, so, oh, way back then, I used to be this way, that way, you think a lot about that. But man, it doesn't even matter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It doesn't even think that you used to holler and cry over the fight or, you know, you turn your head and keep that on walk, man. We need to find out what matters most in life. Amen. It's not where you live, what you drive, what That's you right. own. Amen. We need to find out what matters Amen. most Amen. in life. Uh, if a house, if you're in the house, if it's just been dawning on you, if you're in a house and it catch on fire, you may have some valuable stuff in there. Mm -hmm. But you ain't got time to think about your valuable Amen. stuff. Amen. 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 Then it comes down to now, what matter most as a Christian? Mm -hmm. There's some things that as Christians that we should know. I I'm still learning, and I believe, believe as long as we live, we stay here, we're going to be forever Amen. learning. Amen. Amen. You, won't ever, you won't ever reach the top. Amen. You will always, Amen. always be here forever learning. Amen. And so we want to talk about tonight, we as Christians, mm -hmm. some things. This is just some things. That we should know. Amen. We should know what matters in our life and even in other people's life. Mm -hmm. What you know should encourage you to read more of the word. Amen. Mm -hmm. When you start to learn and study the scripture, knowing about the scripture, it makes you want to read another scripture. Amen. And then when you read that scripture, it won't do call you to read. Another scripture. That's right. mm -hmm. What you know should deepen your relationship with God. I'm talking about from a mm -hmm. spiritual point now. Mm -hmm. The things that we know it should cause us to seek after God. Mm -hmm. We should be God chasers. Yes. Amen. We should be chasing after God. Mm -hmm. These are things that Christians we, we need to know. We're chasing after the black pride. Mm -hmm. uh, Save them. Uh, but do we take that same amount of energy and, and seek in prayer? Seek after God. These are things we should know. Uh, what you know should cause you to continue to seek God. Amen. Amen. These, these are just some things that we should know. Let's go to 1 John and see what John has to say about him. From verses 13, you get on uh, how that chapter talks about we know God hear us. We, we, we should know that when we pray yes. that God hear us. 
no matter what nobody else says or think, you ought to know. If nobody else uh, wants to hear, you, you should know that God hears us. Uh, I will share this with you. Uh, I don't think I've never told anybody. It's not a secret. When I preach, I be fighting the devil sometimes. You'd be surprised. Preaching is, is not what you think it is. Uh, it's a warfare right in the pulpit. Because while uh, I'm trying to tune in, stay in with God and hear God and follow his direction, the enemy is probing. Don't nobody want to hear. Amen. Ain't nobody. I'm still trying to get this message across. And he said, don't nobody want to hear. But see, you won't ever tell, I won't ever, you won't ever know a fight. I, I can't preach and say, leave me alone. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And when I get through the sermon, I'm tired. Because I'm doing two things, I'm preaching and fighting. The same thing about when you stand up teaching. Sometimes when you stand up teaching, the devil messing with you while you're trying to teach. And you still bet you haven't got to it, but one of these times, you're going to be trying to teach Sunday school, and you're going to be right there. See, he's there, he's a distractor. Yeah, yeah. But when you know that you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, let, let's go to 1 John chapter 5, verse 13. And we're going to just read a few verses of this and we'll talk about uh, what, what you know. Then we're going to go back to probably John chapter 9 and we're going to cap it off from there. Read. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God. Listen, he said, these things. Now, it, when he said these things, it's more than one. Amen. He said, these yeah. things have I written unto you. Mm -hmm. That ye believe, it has said nothing about your pastor. It has said nothing about your moderator. It has said nothing about your bishop. It said that uh, these things have I written unto you that ye believe on the the name on the son of Jesus of, of, the, of his son. Read on. That ye may know. Oh, oh. That ye may know. That ye may know. I just said a while ago we want to talk about some things that we should know. Amen. And, and you can't get this sometimes just always praying. Now you got to read some. You, you can't bring a gallon of water home without carrying at least a gallon of bucket with you. Amen. You have to have something. To, listen, even if you're going to pick berries, you got to put something to put the berries in. Read. That you have eternal life. You see, these, these are things as the body of Christ or Christian, we should know that we have eternal life. You don't need to be going around here, well, I, I really feel like I think so, I hope so, I may. No, you need to know. There, there, there are certain things about Christian that we ought to know. Amen. It's not, I'm not saying that you're not going to be sick. I'm not saying that there will be no trial. Amen. I'm not saying that there will be no tribulation. But there is something that you should know in spite of everything that you go through. Amen. If it get darker than darker, heavier than heaven, you ought to know. Amen. I got eternal life. Amen. No matter if everybody walks away from me, you ought to know Amen. that you have eternal life. And, and, and when you, oh Lord have mercy. And when you know that you have that, in it and everything does not block you nor stop you. Amen. When you know you have he said, this, I, 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 he thinks that this, I'll write them unto you that you will know. And once you know it, can nobody take that away from you? Come on. And that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. And listen, and that you, that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. In other words, that's the only way you can be saved. Amen. You can't be saved by no other name. I, I believe he talks about it in the book of Acts, uh, maybe chapter 4, maybe around verse 12. There's no other name under the sun whereby you can name must be saved. That's the only name that you can be saved by. And if you know that you are saved, don't let nobody 
discount you. Nobody can distract you. Even though you might be, you know, way out there on a limb, but if God has brought you in, uh, let the whole world keep on saying you're out there on that limb. Oh, yeah. But if you know that you're on the bank, Amen. you still can praise God. Amen. If you've been out there on the ocean of wild out and rolling, if you've been out there on the ocean of gin, oh, yeah. if you've been out there on the ocean of, of marijuana, uh, but if you know that you're on the banks uh, of Jesus Christ, amen. you don't let nobody stop you now. Amen. Okay, come on. And this is the confidence. Wait a minute, see, you ought to have confidence. If I don't believe in you, that's my business. But you ought to have confidence in God. Amen. These are things you're, you should know. Read. That we have in him. Look, wait a minute. This is the confidence that we have in him. You ought to know that. If when the Lord saved you, you know you were saved. Amen. See, we're not saved because somebody walked by and said, you got it. Amen. You're not saved because somebody walked by and just laid their hands on you. Amen. You're not saved because somebody gave you a prayer call. Mm -hmm. Amen. You're not saved because somebody touched you. Amen. Uh oh. We are saved through it by the grace of God. Amen. And when you know that God has saved you, Lord have mercy. And sometimes it gets mighty hard. It gets difficult sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when you get at the last blink and it looks like nothing else is going to work out, you know you are saved. Oh, yeah. And sometimes the devil says, you know you ain't saved. You just look like, act like, and sound like. But deep down on the inside, yeah. oh, you know you're saved. You might not make every right turn. You might not stop the every stoplight. Oh, you might went through a stop sign. You might stumble. You might fall. But deep down on the inside, you ought to know that you're saved. Amen. See, if you had to wait until somebody else said you were saved, you might not be saved. You can't wait and depend on what somebody else said. You got to know within yourself that you're saved. And, 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 and knowing that you are saved, you won't slack back. Amen. Amen. You will keep right on pressing power. You keep right on going. See, see, Apostle Paul uh, saw it. He was saw it then, but trained Paul. But the brother know he was saved. Amen. Because he knows he said, I'm forgetting those things. Uh -huh. I'm forgetting all my traditions and all this stuff. I'm forgetting all this stuff. He said, but you know what? I haven't apprehended it. You know, I haven't arrived yet. He said, but I'm, I'm on my way. You know he said? I'm pressing. Yeah. That's something that we don't talk about, but it's pressing. Yeah. It, it, when you know that you are saved, you press your way sometimes. Nobody can do it all, make it all, except, but you got to get in a press. Yeah. But when, when God sees you start to press, oh, yeah. that, listen, let me tell you something. Hollering and crying, don't even move, but don't even fade, dog. Yeah. Especially if it's not real. When tears don't fade, especially if they're not real. Mm -hmm. But when it's real, yes. it moves God. Yes. Come on, read. That if we ask anything according to his will. Wait a minute. I'm telling you, as the body of Christ, there's something we need to, we ought to know that we should know. It said that if we ask anything according to to his will. In other words, what we're asking have to line up with the WW. What in the word? The will and the word. If it don't line up with the will and the word, it's not going to happen. It said we ask anything according to his will. See, we as Christians need to know that. That when we pray, we need to pray the will of God. And pray the word of God. And when we start to pray in the will of God and pray in the word of God, we can't go wrong. Amen. There's Amen. some things that we really need to know. But I mean we could we could talk about this this stuff here for the next 20 years still won't even but what no? I mean I'm, I'm talking from the positive side now, but there's some things you really need to know. Everybody not gonna love you. Amen. 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 Everybody not gonna lack you. Amen. Everybody don't want to be around you. Amen. you. You need to know that. But just because you don't love me, you don't like me, don't want to be around me, that shouldn't change my perspective for God. Amen. 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 
Oh, you see where we are? And a lot of times people break on down because no folks don't care nothing about death. A lot of folks don't care nothing about Jesus. He wakes them up in the morning. But you got to know you have to take a licking and keep that on ticking. Read on. He heareth us. Listen, listen to what I'm saying. With these are things that we should know when we pray the word and when we pray the will. God hears us. I, I, that's why I come out with somebody else to read that. It said when we pray the will and pray the word of God, God hears us. So there's a flip side to that. So if we do not pray the will and do not pray the word, God ain't paying no mind. That's flip side to read. And if we know that he hear us, wait a minute, It said, you said if? Yeah. 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 And if? Wait a minute. Mm -hmm. uh, I will cook it at you. Yeah. <laughs> That's used to be, I guess it still is, a conjunction. Yeah. Yeah. And if we know, ah, he here. Mm -hmm. no, don't vote right now. How, how many times that you know you have prayed and you know God heard you? See, it's, it's not the length of your prayer. Amen. Amen. It's the contents of it. Amen. It doesn't take a long prayer to get God's attention. Amen. And, and sometimes all you got to say, Lord, have mercy. Amen. It's already there. And then sometimes you can pray 20, 30 minutes and there ain't nowhere to go. Amen. See, a lot of times, you know, you're going to have to be like the Pharisees praying these long prayers and Praying all these big words. That, that's listen, all thing you're doing is trying to impress folks. Amen. Amen. Let me tell y'all something. Impressing folks, you don't get no credit for. Oh, Amen. Oh, oh, no. Amen. Let me try it one more time. Impressing folks, you don't get no credit for. Amen. Amen. Read. Whatsoever we ask, we know. Well, wait a minute. I keep hearing this word, know. <laughs> that means understanding. But whatsoever we ask, we know because we pray in the will of God. Amen. And we pray in the word of God. Yeah. That's one thing that I want to be a great prayer for. Mm -hmm. Not for no point. I just want to learn how to pray better mm -hmm. and pray more. Mm -hmm. Because prayer can get you places yes, yes, that you normally can't get. It can do things that a ordinary person just cannot do. Amen. And we know that God hears us. Let's try with pen right there. God, I, that, I ain't got to work on this. Book no more. Watch this. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 38, I believe that's where it is, chapter 38, verses 1 through 5, when it, it talks about this, this brother that was sick, Hezekiah. Said he was sick. He said Hezekiah was sick unto death. I think that's where chapter 38, verses 1 through 5. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he was sick unto death. Watch this. And watch what I'm trying to say now. Hezekiah, uh, God talked to Isaiah, told him to listen. He said, Go and tell him Amen. to. Set his house in order. Mm -hmm. In other words, tell him to get ready, prepare, he gonna die. Amen. Amen. And the man of God, the prophet, went and told him, mm -hmm. to set your house in order because you gonna die. Mm -hmm. You don't find Hezekiah fussing, arguing. You don't even find him asking no questions. I mean, that's not good news. You said you want to. Sometimes, God, you go to the doctor, and they used to do it. They don't do it now. They have, used to have a sweet way, a good way of telling you, you know, uh, you won't you don't have many days or whatever. But now they go to the bedside and say, you might make it through days. Oh, and you already sick. Yeah. <laughs> they say, I'll give you to tomorrow morning. Oh, yeah. 
But when you know God, Lord. you can say, well, that's what they say. They say and you say. Say, but I got another attorney. Amen. I ain't going nowhere until he says that. <laughs> Do you follow what I'm saying? But get back to Hezekiah. Watch this. What, what he did was he turned to the wall. The book of Isaiah is not the only book that talks about this man being sick. Watch this. He said, but he, he turned to the wall and prayed to God. He must have prayed the will and the word. And you know what he said? I, I didn't even turn to it, but I know where he said it. He said, he said, Lord, you know. You know my life. You, in other words, you know how I live. And you know what I believe. He, he didn't pray no long, no great long prayer. Amen. We really don't know. It really doesn't say. I, I don't know where he was in the bed or whether he was in the chair. But the scripture said he turned to the wall. Oh, yeah. That's the word. Boy, I can preach that if the wall could talk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if our wall could talk. <laughs> he won't be telling a lot of prayer, though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Watch this. Oh, yeah. He turned to the wall and prayed to God. Oh, yeah. Damn. God, God sent out there to the messenger to tell him to set his house in order. I'm talking about some things that Christians should know. Amen. You need to know who to call on. Yeah. Amen. You, 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 you need to know. Oh, yeah. it, it, it's good to call the pastor when you're going through and you're sick or whatever, trying. That's good. There's nothing wrong with that. Oh, yeah. But you ought to have a prayer life for yourself. You, you, you ought to be able to get in contact with God yourself. Amen. Amen. Well, sometimes we forget. Yeah. But watch this. He turned and he prayed. Yeah. And when I read the read that story, and the prophet got back and God told him, let's say, go back. Go back. Go back. I, I need you to go back. Yeah. No doubt, after Isaiah told him, what God said. Mm -hmm. Before he could get back in problem. He, had, he, he didn't wait till tomorrow the next day. That brother turned right onto the wall. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm talking about some things that we as Christians should no. know. Yeah. You should know how to get in contact with God if your family member can. Amen. <coughs> he turned to God and guess what? He said, he said go back. He said, I said, go back and then tell him. I said, go back. Go back. And tell him. Tell him that I, I, I heard his prayer and I've seen his tears. Tell him I'm going to add 15 more years to his life. Not that he didn't die, but guess what? He had a stench. All of us can use a stench. <laughs> See, sometimes, you know, if your car knows you're doing 15, sometimes they give you grace for it, sometimes they give you five days. And sometimes we use them too. Yeah, See, y'all looking at me kind of strange now. Yeah. How can you do on the first? If you do on the first, that means the first, not 15, but sometimes they give you grace for it. Oh, yeah. He extended that thing. Mm -hmm. Why? Because he know who to call on. Yeah. When trouble comes, and we have the body of Christ need to know who to call on. Come on, man. come on, finish the top of verse uh, 15. We know that we have the petition. Listen, we know that we have the petition. Read on. That we desire of him. That, listen, that we desire of him. These are, these are some things that we as Christians, that we should know. Now, we should know that we have eternal life. Now, I'm not just saying it just to be saying it, but this is a fact. You need to know that you have eternal life. Amen. Because when you leave home, none of us have no guarantee. We all looking to go back safe. Amen. 
But even if you don't get back saved, even if you don't even get back, still, you still need to know, I have eternal life. Yeah. See, you need to know that. Yeah. You, you, you need to know that you're saved. Yeah. Amen. Now, I'm going to hear a little touch of one, but it'll be all right. The body of Christ, we as Christians, need to know that we are sealed. Amen. Amen. I, I, I never said you won't mess up now. I didn't say that. Amen. I said we need to know oh, yeah. that we are sealed. Amen. Oh, I just had a flashback. It's been some years. I mean, it's been, ooh, it has been probably 18 years back. Uh, I went and did, uh, I think it was Pastor Fred and Pastor Hyman anniversary, I think it was. Uh, yeah, y'all, y'all, some of y'all re may remember when we closed down uh, one Sunday, third Sunday, I think that's when it was. Anyhow, I, 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 I talked, I preached about being seated then. And, and, and I brought uh, a bottle. And I put it on for y'all remember me kicking that bottle? I kicked that bottle, I knocked that bottle around, but the liquid stuff didn't never come out. I said, that's where our life is. Sometimes we were being pushed, we were being kicked. Yes. Then I saw that bar, everybody, the content was still there. Yes. That's the way our life is. Sometimes we are being pushed, we are being shamed. Yes. But we are sealed to the day of redemption. Yes. Okay. Now, once, now this, once God sealed you, yes. uh oh. <laughs> you'll see. Uh oh. See, let, let's, let me see how can I say this. If Walmart truck is full of goods and it's going to leave Greenwood tonight and have to go all the way to Atlanta, Georgia, they put a seal on that door. Amen. Amen. You know what I mean? That it won't be open until it reaches its destination. Amen. Amen. Now, from here to Atlanta, Georgia, wherever it's going at, it's going to have some bumps. Amen. Amen. It's going to might have an accident on the way. Amen. But guess what? It's still a seal. You might have an accident. You might stumble. You might fall. But you seal. And you need to know that I'm sealed to the day of redemption. See, see, God don't have this. God is not like you and I have to do stuff. When God seals you, when God S S seal and save you. When God S A S seal and save you. Well. When that person make a mistake and do wrong, folks, well, I thought he or she was saved. I thought he or she was right. Oh, yeah. But we all made mistakes because all of us are in this scene. Amen. I don't have time to go to it because not in my text, not in my notes. But David was a man after God. No oh, heart. God said he made a mess. Amen. But he still, uh oh. oh. See, see where we're at now? Did you to get you there every that time? Amen. But when God seals you, See, that's why I come David. He didn't say, Lord, say, renew me uh, another spirit. He said, renew me the right spirit. Uh oh. Do, the, do it back over again. These are some things that we as Christians need to know. See, we need to know if you're in God's hand, the devil can't pluck you out. You need to know that. Let me try it one more time. We as Christians, as the body of Christ, we need to know that we are in God's hand. Amen. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and, and when you are in oh. God's hand, Amen. it does not matter what come or what go. You don't have nothing to worry about. Why? Because I'm in God's hand. Amen. You need to know that. Oh, yeah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Mm. He told the boy, I said, listen. He said, let's go over to the other side. Let's have the text read. Yeah, uh, he, he, he said, let's go over. O-V-E-R. Let's go over to the other side. He didn't say that, but let's go under the other side. He said, let's go In other words, he didn't ever tell him when that's going to happen. He said, let's go over. Amen. And as they got ready to go, I'm, I'm doing this to put ice on the cake. They got ready to go over to talk about the storm road. Oh, yeah. Start the storm. Road. And he, the boy that had seen him work a lot of stuff Amen. was on that ship. Amen. And that storm began to rise. They knew he was in the hinder part. 
They went down and woke him up. Yes. Every once in a while, a way of speaking, we ought to wake him up. In other words, we ought to call him. <laughs> Somebody ought to die. Amen. Because sometimes we get mighty stormy out here. Right. And they went down there and said, Jesus said, Master said, said do you care? I said, we're going to pass. I'm, I'm going to try to tell you some stuff that we need to know. Right. It talked like Jesus just woke, they woke him up and he came right out on the deck. All of us got some debts in our life. Yes, yes. We need for Jesus to step out on our debt. Mm -hmm. Jesus, I'm talking about he had so much power, he didn't even point his finger. Amen. He just walked right on out there and said, Jesus, be still. We in, back up, way back. Oh, yeah. All of them just got ready. Oh, yeah. Then they said, well, what man is this? A man is this that even the wind and the sea obey. obey. Amen. It's been this October, make five years. Yeah, make five or six years. Uh, when my Aunt Jane the funeral was here, I preached from that same service. Peace in the midst of the storm. We're going to have some storms in our Amen. life. But you got to know who you are. And if you know that you are saved, yes. then all the devil say is nothing to you. Amen. You keep right on going. See, when you know you got 50 cents in your pocket, and everybody walking door, I look at you with your broke self. You can smile with 50 cents in your pocket because you know you're not broke. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I'm talking about when you know it. <laughs> see, we not, see listen, most of the time, we feel great when we know we got a big bank account, when we know we got all this other stuff. But I feel better when I know God is on my side. Because your bank account can run low and run out. But when you know for your sake. Let me let me move on. Let, let me get one more scripture. Let, let me get one more. And we, God, this is good. Let's go to John chapter 9 real quick. Amen. We're going to be going through this one pretty fast. You can go back and read for yourself. Let's go to John chapter 9, and we're going to read from uh, verses 1 through probably 26 real quick. Okay. And, and as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. Listen, J Jesus was passing by. I'm going to be interrupted, but keep on reading. Listen, uh, as Jesus was passing by, he saw a man, a person that was born, that was blind from his birth. See, this is why we need to read and study. Ask God to give us a deeper revelation and an interpretation. But guess what? The really the more of this text is not by his eye. Uh-oh. We all were born blind. Yeah. Born blind from the born in sin. Oh, but read on. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, wait, wait a minute. His disciples asked him, read. Who did sin? You know, I, Y'all gonna have to follow it because you you gonna say, well, how is this gonna connect with what we should know? We'll find out. You may read. This man or his parents. They, they want to know who sinned. This man or his parents. They were looking from the point of view that he was born blind because somebody had sinned. No, that's not it. Read. That he was born blind. Mm -hmm. Jesus answered, neither has this man. Yes, Jesus. Yes, it ain't got nothing to do about nobody's sin. His parents neither have his neither have this man sin nor his parents sin. Read. Nor his parents, but that the works of God. Wait a minute. What is the work of God? That folk be saved. Yes. God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. He said He He came to do the work. Read. Read. Should be man, should be made manifest. Listen, this God. word manifest will be made known. Read. I must work the works of Wait him. Wait a minute. He said, I, Jesus said, I must work the works of him that sent me. God sent his son. Amen. Read. That sent me. Well, it is day. Wait a minute. Whoa. Wow. Hey, you know, it don't have nothing to do with that daylight out there. Amen. Amen. <laughs> While you're alive. Yeah. Ain't got nothing to do with daylight. Read. The night cometh when no man can work. That I means when you're dead, you go and read. As long as I am in the Wait, world. See, see, as long, I'm talking about there's some things you need to know. As long as I am in the world. Jesus Christ is the only one can say I am and be who he said he is at the same time. Yes. Read. 
Now, when the light of the world. Wait a minute, he said, I am the light of the world. Now, he got to be shining mighty bright. Read. Amen. When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground. Wait a minute. When he had just thus spoken, he spit on the ground. Read. And made clay. But you know, hold right We won't mess with that now. We'll get back and visit that some other time. I'm still meditating. I'm still thinking about it. The scripture says that Jesus spit on the ground and made clay. So evidently, he won't no clay. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I mean, I'm just looking at the text. Made clay. He didn't say he spit on the ground and took clay. He said he made clay. Read. Of the spittle. Mm -hmm. And he anointed the eyes of the blind yes, man. Can, can you imagine he take his spit? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh. mm, you see where we're at now? Okay. And folks, don't want you to spit <laughs> <laughs> Read. The eyes of the blind man with the clay. Mm -hmm. Read. And said unto him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam. Listen, watch this. See? <laughs> God is in here. This man was blind. I'm talking about some things that we should know. This, this man was blind. He could, he could hear, but he could not see. He could understand. Watch this. When Jesus spit on the ground and took the made the clay and put in his eye and told him to go to the pool of Siloam and wash, this man didn't ask no question. He, he, he took him at his word. Guess what? He started believing him too. Amen. Read. I told you didn't so much about his eyes. Read. Which is by interpretation sense. Jesus said, to "Read." He went his way. To Wait, the he, Lord. he went his way. Read. And washed and came seeing. Read. The neighbors therefore. Wait, read. he washed and he came seeing. seeing. Read. The neighbors therefore. And they which before had seen him. Listen, he, he, wait a minute, wait a minute. He, his neighbor and folk therefore knew he was blind. But guess what? Jesus just used him to work the work so people could catch faith. Amen. Read. Said, is not this he that they, they didn't ask the question. Is that that ain't him? Is you know how sometimes we see folk we y'all do for right now. <laughs> Somebody you ain't seen a long time tomorrow. God. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when the folk have picked up something, you know. Amen. That sat and begged. Yes, that's it. Read on. Some said, this is he. This is what it said. Some said, that's him. Read. Others said, he is like him. But he said, I am he. He spoke for said, read. Therefore said they unto him, how were thine eyes open? His was so very interesting. Jesus said, I, I, I must work the works of him that sent me while they Now they ask the question. How? I mean, they ought to be more so faithful that the mind made I was old. They want to know how it old. Read. He answered said, a man that is called Wait, wait a minute. Jesus. Listen, he said, a man that called Jesus. You can say what you want to. Somebody talk to Jesus about him. Read. Made clay. Well, oh, 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 wait a minute. He said the same thing. Made clay. Man, I can't, I can't do it tonight. I'm, I'm still trying to figure out. I'm going to go back and visit that again. I'm still trying to figure out why did this blind man say he made clay? And he couldn't see. Mm -hmm. And I went and washed and I 
Listen, they asked the question, how did your eyes came on? Guess what? He gave them directly instruction how they came on. Read. He didn't leave nothing out. Read. Then said they unto him, where is he? Where is he at? Read on. He listen, said, listen, wait, wait, listen. Have you ever thought about when you read that text? They want to know where it was he at. You know why when that question came up? Because it wasn't sad. If it wasn't sad, they wouldn't say it now. They want to know who's doing all this. Read on. Read you. I know not. They they brought to they brought to the Pharisees him that aforetime was blind. Mm -hmm. And it was the Sabbath day. I, oh, I told you it was the Sabbath day. You you don't be over no doing nothing. They believe more in tradition and custom than believing in Jesus Christ. Read. When Jesus made the clay and opened his well, eyes. Wait a minute, that made three times that you said when Jesus made the clay. Read. Then again, the Pharisees also asked Listen, you still got Pharisees. Read. How he had received his sight. Listen, they asked the question how he received his sight. They ought to have been thankful. Amen. They ought to have been glad this man see, received his sight. It's the same thing about folks now. You get something, they want to know how you got it. Amen. Amen. Read on. He said unto them, He put clay upon my eyes, and I washed and do see. Mm -hmm. He said, He put clay upon my eyes, and I now do see. Read. Therefore said some of the Pharisees. Wait a minute, not all said some of them. Read. This man is not of God. Wait a minute, they talk about Jesus. He said he's not of God. And the reason why that they say that he's not of God because of what they said. Amen. That they won't say they wouldn't say the word. <laughs> Read. Because he he put not the Sabbath. Oh, day. I, <laughs> I told you. Read on. Others said, How can a man that is a sinner do such miracles? Hey, listen. <laughs> Y'all hear that take like Amen. I'm hearing it too. Them folk had a problem. How can a man be a sinner? And they will classify him as a sinner because he does something on the Sabbath. Oh, oh, read. And there was a division among them. Wait a minute, there was a division among them. Read so we go. They say unto the blind man again, What sayest thou of him? Wait a minute. It come back to this blind man again. Keep right on asking, What sayest thou in read? That he has opened my eyes. He said he is a prophet. Oh, listen, boy, this text is good. Listen. <laughs> when the Lord do something for you, yes, you can tell the same story. Amen. Amen. Oh, no. Amen. <laughs> when God brings you out yes, yes. and do something for you, you can wake up in the middle of the night yes, right, and right. tell the story. Amen. Read. But the Jews did not believe concerning see, see, Wait a minute. See, the Jews didn't believe in him. Read. That he had been blind. Listen, the Jews didn't even believe that he had been blind. They thought something else had went on. Read. Oh, yeah. And received his sight until they called the parents. Wait a minute. Listen, the, the, the Jews did not believe that this man was blind. <laughs> Wouldn't take the blind. This, this man know he was blind. Amen. But they did not believe he was blind until they called the parents. Mm -hmm. Now, watch this. Boy, boy, boy I, no, this is coming on the top. I ain't got from the note. Listen, it said, the Jews did not believe this man was blind Amen. until they called his parents. Mm -hmm. Well, at least they must believe the mom and dad then. <laughs> <laughs> Read. They had received his sight. Mm -hmm. And they asked him, saying, is this your son, who ye say was born blind? Listen, now, now, now the parents, I'm talking about some things that we as Christians should know. Uh, it's going to get to it in just a minute. Hold on, we get that. Uh, the, 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 the parents wouldn't say it too much because they knew if they said too much, they'd be kicked out of the synagogue. Amen. Wow. Amen. So they had a way of round about. And you're going to get to the point where they say, well, you know, if you want to know to ask him. Read. How then do he now see? They didn't want to know how he see. Read. His parents answered them and said, We know that this is our son, and that he was born blind. We, listen, we know this is our son. Mm -hmm. And he came in this world like this. Read. But by what means? But by how he see? Man, man, I don't know. Read. He now sees? Mm -hmm. we, we know not. See, I, I told you the person said this. Because the mother was not there when Jesus did all of this. Read. For who has opened his eyes? Read. We know not. We don't know. Read. He is of age. Listen, he's old enough. When God do something for you, you're old enough. Amen. Amen. <laughs> yeah, I'm old enough. You can speak for yourself. 
Nobody's going to have to tell you that you say you ought to know that you know that you know that you are saved. You're old enough. Nobody's going to have to witness and testify for me. I would better stand on my own two feet and tell the goodness of Jesus. You can't tell my story like I can tell my story. You haven't been through what I've been through. I know for myself. Three. Ask him. He shall speak for himself. Listen, the mama know that child going to tell the truth. That's why I told you, you know, sometimes we can't always tell folks that's our truth. Mm-hmm. But they were able to tell them to ask, ask. Read. These words say to the parents of us that hear the Jews, for the Jews had agreed there already that if any man did confess that he was Christ. See, that's why they wouldn't sell us so much. Read. He should be put out of the synagogue. I told you he going to be put out. Read. Therefore said his parents, he is of age, ask him. Mm-hmm. Then again called they the man that was wise. Wait a minute, this makes about three times they keep calling for the same question. When did they ever go get it? Read. <laughs> and said unto him, Give God the praise. This is what he said. Give God the praise. That's what we need to be doing. We may not have been born blind, but we were born in sin. Amen. If we are saved, we as Christians, we need to know that we ought to give God the praise. Why we got to come in every Sunday morning? Come on, let's give God a praise. Uh, you ought to come in here with a praise. Amen. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered and said, whether he be a sinner or no, I know not. One thing I know. Listen, listen, listen. We're going to start right there. Did you have brought verse 25, 26? Oh, all right, so listen. It said, listen. They said, for we know that this man is a sinner. Just because they were saying he was a sinner did not make him a sinner. Just because people say that you're a sinner, or you're doing wrong, etc., don't make you a No, let me rephrase that. Just because people say that you are not saved does not make you not saved. Amen. They were saying, for we know. They don't know nothing. Mm-hmm. For we know that this man is a sinner. Okay, come on, finish reading the result. Okay. Well, whereas I was blind, man, I listen, see. Listen, listen. The man made the plan after three rounds. Whether well, this man is a sinner, you can read this in your text. Said, well, they, they said, for we know that this man is a sinner. But he said, whether well, he's a sinner or no. Or no. Uh-huh. I don't know. I, I, I don't even know all about that. But he said, but one thing, I'm talking about what we all know. Amen. But one thing I know. Amen. That man stood to his stones. And that's what we need to stick to, what we know. Amen. Now, what do you know? He said, one thing I know. Where at? In other words, I used to be blind. But now, I see you. Not, not only could he talk about but he could see this. Amen. So we as Christians, there are certain things, there's something we all know. Just let me name up three or four and we will go. We won't finish it, but we will go. You need to know that you are saved. Amen. You need to know that you've been redeemed. Amen. We need to know that we, we've been washed in the blood of the Lamb. We need to know that we are saved by grace. We need to know that we are bought with a price. We need to know that we've been forgiven. We need to know that our sin is cast just as far as from the east and from the west and the north and from the south. We need to know that. We need to know that we have the victory. We need to know that we have overcome the world. Last but not least, and we need to know that we are saved and that we are sealed unto the day of redemption. We need to know that Jesus Christ is coming back. We need to know that he will return one day. These are just some things as Christians that we need to know. That ain't all we need to know. We need to know if we are not saved when he comes, we are lost too. We need to know that there is a hell and there is a hell. I would like to say something will help you along the way. There's something that we need to know. 
those are the churches over which have never been closed. That maybe somebody will come back to church, somebody will renew, reunite the church, and give their life back. He's standing at the door, he's standing with his arms stretched wide open. Come unto me, all you labor, heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Let us pray. Most gracious and all wise and eternal God, a few of your children have come together again just to tell you thank you. First of all, God, we want to thank you for last night's rest. We thank you for early rising this morning. Thank you for life. We thank you for health and strength. Thank you for your love and your kind, your grace and your mercy. Father, we thank you for bringing us not far in the way where God, you brought us all the way. Father, when we wasn't fit to live nor good enough to die, you look beyond our faults, and Father, you saw our need. So, Father, we come tonight to ask you, God, to continue to lead us and guide us and direct us. Father, that we will do your will and do your way. And so, Father, we pray for those tonight that's down and out, sick and shed in all over the world. Father, we pray for all the Marie, Marie family. Strengthen them right now. Help them to look to the heal for what's coming to help. And God, will allow their help come from you. And Father, we just want to tell you thank you. We just want to give you honor and give you glory. Father, we pray for the absent part of the church. Father, you know where it is. You know what they're doing. Touch their hearts, touch their minds, touch their soul. Wrap your arms around them and keep them in your care. Father, lead us that we be led, guide us that we be guided, direct that we will be directed. Father, those that's in the hospital, the rest home, the private home, the prison bound, wherever they may be, realize, God, that you are here, you are there, you are everywhere. Realize, God, that you sent your son to come to seek and to save them that are lost. Realize Satan is on the rampage. He's come to kill, steal, and to destroy. But you have come that we will have life and that we will have it more abundant. Father, we want to thank you for what you're getting ready to do. Father, you have brought us from now on from January of this year on down to the last month in this year. Father, you've been some rain, you've been some storm, but Father, you have kept us, and Father, we want to tell you thank you. And Father, give us more love, more peace, and more joy, and more happiness, and more understanding. Help us to live holy, help us to live upright, help us to live a better Christian life. Father, we pray tonight, God, that you would such our heart, mind, and soul. Forgive us for our omission and commission. Father, there be any sin, anything, God, that you are displeased with, Father, we need to move right now. Give us what you need, what we need to make it on this journey. Father, we pray that you give us the spirit of reading and studying and fasting and praying and meditating. Help us, God, to think less of ourselves and more about you. Father God, give us a word, God, that will encourage somebody. Father, that it will enlighten somebody, that will help somebody along the way. Father God, we pray tonight. We pray for all of our children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren. Father, those that's in yeah. kindergarten, God, those that in high school, yeah. Father, those that's in grammar school, yeah. those that's going to college. Father, we pray yeah. for their safety now. Yeah. Father, we pray for the press. We pray for the teachers. Father, we pray for everybody that's on the school campus. Father, we pray for those that's in our workplaces. Father, we pray for the president and vice president. Father, everybody that's in leadership, touch their heart, touch their mind, and touch their soul. Father, we pray for our family. Father, those that's homebound. Father, you know that they're not able to mobile, not able to get out and do like they used to do. But Father, encourage their heart, encourage their mind. Let them know, God, you are still God. You are still there. And so, Father, for that call, we just want to tell you thank you. Realizing, God, that you have been good to me, God. And God, I want to thank you for it. Thank you for all that you've done, all you're doing, all you're getting ready to do. Lead me, guide me, and direct me. Help me to be a better pastor, better leader, better teacher. Father, that will be pleasing and acceptable in thy sight. And Father, we have, have we leave this place, but not your presence. Take care of us up and down the dangerous highway and byway. We ask thee blessing, all other blessing, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the precious Holy Ghost. Now may the grace of our Lord let it rest through and abide with us all. Yes. In force and forevermore, let us all say, Amen. 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 Amen.